For example, you can see them here. Well, there are bullet holes partially. Well, behind the side, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah? So, in other words, the ground floor is usually partially original and the cellars are all original. The front looks as if nothing happened, but the flats are typical 1940s, 1950s standard, Stalinist standard, um, and uh, they don't even pretend to be historical. And the reason for that is actually, well, that, for example, my grandpa. They were not reconstructed, only the landmarks perhaps were, right? And here, um, well, we, they actually could do it without money being involved, really, because in communism you can art, but generally, okay, according to the data provided by the Roman Catholic Church, they give them a great houses, prisons, uh, swimming pools, stables, you know, I mean, and sometimes, sometimes even pulled down or blown up. In Russia, oftentimes it happens. So, here they wanted to show they're actually not that bad after all. So, it's not a perfect, far from perfect, but it is. <laughs> didn't really respect the corpses too much so in other words the space was recycled and when the old corpses would rot they, other people would actually be buried here because they would remove the bones <laughs> And the word actually is shit. And the reason I, I use the word is that actually this is actually the... Well, it's key here. It's this, all those houses here. This was the city dump for hundreds and hundreds of years. And of course, for the last two and a half century, it hasn't been in use, right? It's just next to the castle. But, um, well... I mean, it's politics, but you know, kind of. Um, right. Um, so finally, we're down the market square, the most important part of the old town. Um, this is uh, merchants and craftsmen live. So. Um, well, there's this statue here. Okay, we're not moving for this. I know it's not the most dignified angle, but as bad as it sounds from here. Uh, this is the mermaid. The mermaid, you see her everywhere in the city. You'll see her, so she's on trams, on cabs, on buildings, uh, the monuments like that. Um, and, uh, yes, yeah, uh, so there's, there's the explanation for that. However, was the explanation for also having a mermaid in the emblem? Well, we think of it as... I, I always think mermaids come from the sea, not exactly. the river. For example, well, there's one other European capital uh, with a, a mermaid for an emblem, and it's Copenhagen. And you can easily understand where they, how they arrived at this, right? They've got the Baltic Sea on one side, the North Sea on the other side. Um, and also, we don't really have a clue at how, this, how this happened. Because it's always been something half human, half bestial. But, um, the, like, my favorite image was actually, uh, this was the 17th century, it was half a lizard, uh, half, ma half a man, sword and shield. So this didn't change, sword and shield. 
and where your regular man usually has something very, very different, uh, this unfortunate fellow had a wolf's head here instead. Yeah? Oh! So, yeah. Um, and it's only in the 18th century when they arrived at having a mermaid, and we just... No willy show. It was there's a no good show. explanation for that. Oh, you got yourself. I mean, pretty good. They are good. So. Did you see the photo in the castle last night? Let's find time to You could say it has two layers of the stone. There's one obvious layer, and you hear it everywhere. Yeah? The castle was built to protect something important, and so on and so on. Then the king, or the duke, or the pope, or the emperor, it's always the same thing, hired his best artists. And, um, and therefore, the, the situation only changed in the 1970s when uh, the communist government and again needed to improve their image. This time, it was actually because of protests in Gdańsk, massive protests where the police opened fire against the protesters. Uh, our mm -hmm. first secretary of the communist party, the most important person in Poland, he had to step down. And the new first secretary, this is perhaps the most important part, two secret rooms in the cellars of the National Museum. And one of them was super secret. We have a more universal value. Like, um, like, for example, in Alejo, Spain, there was a room in Spain from, from the National Museum there. The idea was to make this, to make the fire at all. So something was sacrificed like that. However, with the effects of the castle, we got rid of that. We got it's just. Uh... Polish people, or also from all over the because some specialists. We, yeah, I mean, actually, some uh, some things were outsourced for money, uh, outsourced for money. Rational. They, they were taking their ideas from just next to the next to the first one, because King Stanislav was very much into art. There was the late 18th century, and he actually left a lot of things here in Warsaw. So therefore. Apollo, God of Art, has the king's face. But the most interesting uh, uh, sculpture is the purple. Because this is Athena, goddess of wisdom, with the face of Catherine the Great, Catherine II, the Empress of Russia. And I think this lovely thing would be that they were very, very good acquaintances. Not more than just yet, she was the wife of the future Tsar. He was not that important. He was a diplomat working for the great famous Tsar, where in the end he had to leave. Uh, St. Peter's been a bit of a rush, but the stress paid off. Because years later, Catherine got rid of her hunt. She had him strangled to be there. Uh, but I'll tell you a little bit more about him. Maybe you should follow the way.
house. So everything that is somehow interesting was saved. So all the stuff, the big ones. This is, oh, it's not a split you close, it's, uh, it's a fold. And normally, of course, you shouldn't uh, fold your oil paintings, but the castle was burning uh, on that yeah. day, so they had to <laughs> remove it in a hurry. They didn't have time for subtlety. Um, and the big paintings actually are the most important moments in Polish history, according to King Stanislaw. Every diplomat visiting the king had to go through here at one point or another during his, on his way to the throne room. So therefore, this room was a great place to include, like, Introduce some propaganda. As you can see, it's not that big, but um, if they needed more space for a bigger public, you could say, they had a removable throne for the Great Hall, which we just don't have, and uh, all the thrones in the castle are original, so they didn't want to kind of like take away from the value of the original ones by reconstructing yet another one. So the throne is original, as tall as possible, right? So they had to put them away, right? So that's what the store is for. Also, the tables could be used for that. They uh, got them from the Pogero's original. And then if you look at the gilded, for example, just here, the, around the door, can you see that? Yeah. There's, there's actually, in this room, if you look around, there's 15%, roughly, 15% of, if you damage it, it starts breaking instead of bending, and therefore you have to uh, start over, right? But if you get it right, the, the, the spring is so thin that it's, it's so fun. I just had a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a of somebody risking their lives to save them. So in other words, these walls are supposed to tell the story on their own. They deliberately, for example, used a different method of gilding for the new boys there. The closets, yes. However, they were never here. They were not meant to be here. This room was supposed to look just like this. So, um, what kind of a dressing room is this then? And actually, well, even though fu the functions, the study and the dressing room may seem completely different, even though a dressing room without closets may seem not to make sense, Actually, this was very well thought out. This was very well planned. It's just that um, this time they noticed that if you if you die, of course, you tend to lie down. Horizontal position is the position of death. And if you put it like this, of course, it's a it sounds like a position to avoid. So they did for hundreds of years. There were all kinds of superstitions about some I don't know evil spirits going into your mouth when you're lying down. The problem started with the Carpathian to Oslo, but this is a frivolous motive you see in men. Uh, in many veterans of that period, uh, like as a fascinating because this is the thing. This is Professor Jan Swarovski. Yeah, yeah, I know who it is. Is yeah. this yeah. gentleman yeah. here? This is, is Mr. Lech Valenza, yeah. the leader of Andacomus Position. He was actually, he wasn't there to see it but just back then because he was in prison. But this was Professor Swarovski's token of protest. That's a yeah. century. Um, and uh, with. Uh, with uh, well, with, with Kościuszko's heart, we've got lots of such mummified hearts, heart, mummified hearts all over Warsaw. So we've got Frederick Chopin's heart, we've got two of our king's hearts, we've got one uh, writer's Nobel Prize winner's heart, we've got uh, probably more. Um, it's always the heart, almost always the heart, right? Because it's this, this so there's the symbolical value yeah, to this organ, the right? This is the organ with which we feel, after all, right? With, with which we love. And um, although we also do have, that's why I hesitate, we do have the the bowels, the intestines of Augustus the Strong, they're very oh, separately like that too. This is the... Uh, come on. Uh, I mean, that is because... Mm, do you know why would you have, why would you have the bowels? Was he disemboweled? Um, no, no. <laughs> Although he did die, die of alcohol poisoning. Um, but that's another thing. It's actually because... Um, uh, paintings by Canaletto. And the question is, why would you prefer painting over folk? The emotion and the colors. The colors is the first the emotion. Um, <laughs> you know, it gives you a feel for the city and the people here. I've had pierogi. Ah, you've got pierogi, okay. Pierogi. This is something very typical to Poland. Uh, yeah. Dark, this is, yeah, this was like, um, for the, like, uh, uh, like uh, one of those dishes traditionally eaten by the upper classes, yeah. Dark with that, probably, or. Gone, long dead. So this is supposed to be an empty tomb, an empty mausoleum to dedicate to the great kings of all. 
And the propaganda came in, the message here was that well, the greatest of them all was very much alive in Haiti and is there in the portrait. Well, these are some treated portraits, but the idea was the same. Well, it's done it's done himself. And this is actually a beautiful portrait indeed. First and foremost, we can say that it sets, sets the mood, and this man is obviously thinking about something. So he means. Um, and one last thing, just as a small curiosity. We go here behind the place. Hope you did enjoy the tour. Enjoy the rest of your stay. Enjoy your lunch, of course. Uh, maybe come back as tourists. Uh, so I could show you more. So thank you very much. Thank you. Have fun. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.